promise you I won't be before you long today. Amen. 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 Somebody better text the children's church over there and tell them, whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. That's what, that's what Jesus said to Judas, didn't he? Yeah. Whatever you're going to do, do it quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. I appreciate your service and the ushers and greeters. Thank you so much. I appreciate your service. Well, there is a word in the house of the Lord today. We're going to dig right into the word. Amen. We're going to get started. Uh, have you been blessed by the yeah. last few weeks? Yeah. Hey, man, praise Amen. God. Amen. Tell your friends and mama them and sister Amen. them that they can actually go hear the word on YouTube. Amen. We've got our messages for the last few weeks on YouTube. We also have them posted on our New Come and See Facebook page. We want to welcome those who are joining us online. Thank you so much for being a part of the New Come and See worship experience. You've reached us here at the New Come and See Church, our Sunday worship. We thank you for joining us. We realize you could have clicked on anybody's worship page. Right now, you can catch anybody you want, but you decided to be with us, and so we say thank God for you. There's a word in the house for you and we are prepared to receive. Amen. Every heart, every mind prepared to receive. Well, let's go before the Lord God in prayer then. Would you bow your heads with me? Those of you who are watching online, if you will pray, bow your heads in a word of prayer with me and let's join our faith that God will meet us here today. Amen. Father, we come to you today in the name of your son, Jesus, humbly coming before your presence. God, thank you for the blood of Jesus that has given us access into your presence and the blood of Jesus that has made us right with you, O oh God. We thank you and we come before you without any sense of guilt, without any sense of shame or condemnation, God, because we know that you have made us free. And so we give your name praise today, Lord God. We lift you up. We magnify you. We declare that you're a good, good God, that you're an awesome father, that you're an awesome wonder. And there is absolutely no one on this earth like you. There is no one above the earth or beneath the earth that's like you. We make you big, oh God, in this place. We declare that you are El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough, the many-breasted one. And you are Jireh, our provider and you provide everything that we need. And so we give your name, praise, and glory. And this day, as Jesus prayed, give us this day our daily bread. We're asking that you'll meet us today and give us this day's supply of bread. That you'll speak to our hearts, oh God, as we dig into the deep treasures of your word, that you'll allow us, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. Pray that the eyes of our understanding will be flooded with light and illumination, O oh God, and understanding. And we'll be careful to give you and you alone all the glory, honor, and the praise. And if you decide to flow in the gifts of the Spirit, we submit to that today, O oh God. We thank you that everything here today will be done decent and in order. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way today. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and give you praise. Everybody that agree with me said, Amen. 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 Well, praise God. We're going to dig right into the Word. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to the book of Psalm, the 103rd division of Psalm. And as with everything, I have been teaching the last few weeks, the last few months, from passages of passages of scripture that are very familiar to you all, and I pray that you've been able to see like you've not seen before, and that you've been able to hear like you've not heard before, and that you have gotten something out of those scriptures that you may not have seen in times past. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to Believe God and ask you to do the same thing I've been asking for weeks, that you'll open your eyes, your spiritual eyes to see, and see this scripture freshly. Amen? Amen. 
from a fresh perspective. I was asking the Lord last night, I was going to continue in the same vein that I had been in before uh, from Luke chapter 5 where we were talking about launch out and change your thinking. Yeah. Had some other things that God had shown me that I was going to share with you and he may bring it up in this message today. He may bring it out and if he chooses to do so, I'm obedient, I'll yield to it and I'll speak it. But I believe that last night as I was lying and resting, uh, the Lord took me in a different direction. Amen? Amen. I was uh, meditating and pondering on some things that had happened this week. Um, lots of things have gone on in, in on my job and my family. And I began to ask the Lord, well, Lord, I, um, and then I, I began to sense or pick up some things that may have occurred in others. And so I said, well, Lord, how do you tell people? Tell them Jesus is talking right now. You, you get back with him in a minute. And, <laughs> and, uh, but I, I said, um, I said, Lord, how, what, what do you do uh, and how do you encourage people when they've experienced challenges and difficulties? And what do you tell them to go for? Amen. And he dropped this passage of scripture in my heart and in my spirit. And I pray it blesses you like it blessed me. Amen. Amen. He told me, he said, you tell them to remember my love. So the top, the, 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 the title of today's message is remembering God's love. Amen. Can you say, I remember, I remember God's love. God's love. I'm remembering. I'm remembering God's love. Amen. Amen. He said, tell them to remember God's love. If you're watching online and you're going through something or you're watching online and you're experiencing a challenge or a difficulty, remember this. You're not in this fight by yourself. We're not in this thing by ourselves. So we have to remember God's love and understand that because he loves us, we're coming out on the winning side. Amen? Amen. Amen. The scripture says, thanks be unto God who what? Always calls us to triumph. So no matter what it looks like, feels like, or seems like, we always win. The issue is we've got to release our faith in that. We've got to begin to believe God for that. Amen? So we're going to talk about remembering God's love today, and we're going to get out your way. So let's read Psalm 103, the 103rd division of Psalm, verses 1 through 5. And we'll read it together. And I'm going to allow you to remain seated. Amen. We honor the word of God in this house. The word of God is the final authority in this house. We're led of and by the word of God and his spirit. Amen. So just follow along with me. Would you read this with me, please? Verse 1 of Psalm 103. Ready, read. Bless, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy youth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. 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 I see some folk got excited about renewed strength, didn't they? Some folk act like they 18 right now. Y'all have a deep nigga. You, you act like you 18 now, God. Amen. Amen. We're remembering God's love. Now, let's dig into this scripture. So, when we are faced with challenge, and we're faced with situations and circumstances, and we really should not wait until a challenge or a situation or circumstance come upon us, we really should be functioning like this every day. Amen? Why wait till you are faced with adversity to remember how much God loves you? If you remember how much God loves you on a daily basis, then it may keep you out of some situations and circumstances. Amen? But as we dig 
into this scripture, but let's take apart some of these words and let's lift these things out. So if you look at the word bless, the psalmist David wrote this song, and it's a song unto the Lord. And he said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. That's how he starts it out, right? Yeah. Now, you got to know that the word bless if you look at it, the definition, the, the Hebrew uh, definition of it, it means to kneel, to show adoration, to praise, to speak well of. I'll say it again, okay? To kneel, like you're kneeling down to pray, to kneel, to show adoration, to praise, to speak well of. So when you bless somebody, you ain't blessing them out. You blessing them by speaking well of them. Amen? Amen. So you're blessed. Them. I bless you, Pastor Cooley. I declare that good things shall come your way. I bless you, Deaconess Williams, and I declare that something good is going to happen to you today. I bless you, Brother Elmo, and I declare that you shall live long and strong. Yes. And you shall have good health and good strength all the days of your life. I'm speaking well of them. Amen. Amen. I'm blessing them. And the way, and on the flip side, on the reverse, the way you curse somebody, we think cursing somebody means to cuss them out. No, that means to speak a word curse over that person's life. Amen. How many folk have heard, now I ain't talking to nobody up in here, because I know y'all would never do this. But how many of you have heard other folk, parents, you just like your no good name? Yeah. Anybody ever? I, I know ain't none of y'all ever said it. Ain't none of y'all ever said it, and I ain't talking about nobody. Amen? I'm talking about what I'm talking about. But on the reverse, you can actually speak a curse over a person with words. You ain't going to never be nothing. You're good for nothing. You ain't going to never be nothing. You don't seem like you want nothing. You ain't going nowhere. Ain't nobody going to ever want you. Ain't nobody ever going to ever love you. How many people have never heard those kind of things? And then we wonder why some of our kids are in the shape that they in right now. Feeling lonely. Feeling unloved. Feeling unworthy. Feeling like they, they don't nobody want them. We wonder why, because somebody said something to them when they were younger to make them doubt themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And to make them feel like they weren't good enough. Well, I got news for you today, baby. God says you're good enough. Yeah. The scripture says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. The Bible says you are accepted in the beloved. So I have to remind myself all the time, and I had a good dad. As a matter of fact, my daddy had me thinking I could leave tall buildings in a single bound. I had to pipe that down some. But I have to remind myself, I'm enough. God says I'm enough. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I am beautiful in the sight of God. I am accepted by him. Flaws and all. He knows all my insecurities. He knows all my idiosyncrasies. He knows all of my faults. Yes. And he still says I want her. Yes. Or I want him. Yes. I'm accepted in the beloved. Somebody say I'm accepted. Yes. In the beloved. God loves me. God loves me. <laughs> so David, in this song, was talking about he was actually saying, speak well of the Lord. Bless the Lord. And who was he talking to? Look at the scripture. Who was he talking to when he said, bless the Lord? Talk to himself. He was talking to himself. He said, bless the Lord, what? Oh, my soul. Why did he have to say that? Because this is the thing we got to understand. Now, let's go to class again. I know we taught this here, but I need you to understand it again. We are a what? Spirit. We don't have a spirit. We are a spirit. The scripture says we've been made in the image and the likeness of God. God is not a man. 
God is spirit. The scripture says God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him how? In spirit. In spirit and in truth. So if, we're, if God is a spirit and we're created in his image and his likeness, then we too are a what? Spirit. So we are a spirit. We possess a what? Soul. Soul. That's the place where, so the real us is a spirit. The part of us that's born again is our spirit. The real us that's like God is spirit. So the real us, the one that goes home to be with the Lord, the one that goes and leaves this body, when this body is lifeless, that real us is spirit. Somebody say, I am a spirit. I am a spirit. So the real me, my spirit, is on top and in control. It should be if it's not. So my spirit is in control. I possess a soul. Well, what is that, Pastor Abel? I possess a soul. That's my mind, my will, and my emotions. I possess a soul. That's my thinker, my filler, and my chooser. And my thinker, my filler, and my chooser will go in the direction of whatever you feed the most. Yeah. So if you feed your spirit the word of God, your thinker, your filler, and your chooser is going to go in the yeah. direction of your spirit or the word of God. Yeah. If you feed your flesh the most, and I'm not talking about your flesh like food. Yeah. I'm talking your physical body. So I am a spirit. I possess a soul, and all of that is encased in, or I live in what? A physical body. And so if I feed my physical body a whole bunch of junk, the real housewives of this, growing up this and that, uh-huh, I won't going to say it because I might get in trouble if I post this later on, but you heard them. Amen? If you feed your flesh, your mind, all of that junk, and you're listening to songs that's talking about what you're going to do and what you're going to do with and who you're going to do it with, after a while, you can say all day long, I'm not going to do it, but you're going to find yourself doing it. Amen? And it ain't just hip-hop music, because a lot of the older people, we want to make it seem like it's just hip-hop music and it's bad. Well, I got news for you. It was some older folks listening to cheating in the next room. Yeah. <laughs> Talking softly on the telephone. Y'all know y'all heard it? Don't sit up there and look at me. You don't know that song. I'm talking about belting it out. Cheating in the next room. Well, after a while, if you keep sitting up under that a, a long time, you are hanging out in the club, in the cut, all it's going to take is to write somebody. 36, 24, 36. Pass by you, and guess what you're going to be doing? Cheating in the next room. <laughs> all right, all right. Y'all real holy today. Everybody up in here real saved and sanctified. We're with the Holy Ghost today. Everybody over here, y'all. Let me go on and move on. Don't nobody want to act like it. They hit, they hit them. Don't nobody want to. Okay, let's go. So, when we talk about blessing, it means to speak well of. So, the psalmist David is saying, speak well of God. Oh, my soul. Why is that important? Speak well of God. Oh, my soul, my thinker, my filler, my chooser. I know the temptation is to be down and out and to feel sad and feel oppressed and depressed. But I'm telling you, soul of mine, yes. praise the Lord God. Because if your soul will speak well of God, how do we speak well of God? Father, I thank you that you're good to me. You've been better to me than I've been to my own self. I thank you that when I didn't have a dime, you came through for me every single time. Father, I thank you when I thought I was going to lose it, you held me soundly. 
and you kept me. Father, I thank you that when I thought I was going to leave this place, you preserved my life in that accident. You preserved my life through that sickness. Father, when I thought I couldn't make it, and I was caught in that bad relationship situation, you delivered me from that. Oh, I thank you. And when I thought I was going to be caught up over and over again in that habit, God, whatever that habit is, Father, you delivered me and took the very desire and the taste for that thing away from me. Now I don't desire that anymore. Now I don't want to do that anymore. And guess what? People don't even know that I even had an issue with that because you delivered me so good. And Father, I say thank you. That's how you speak well of the God. So you got to tell your soul, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And you bless, you command your soul to speak well of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And then the scripture goes on to say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now here's where your remembering comes in. Amen? Some of us need to go back and use our sanctified imagination. You know what I mean when I say sanctified imagination? We're real good at using that worldly imagination. When we getting ready uh, to do something wrong, and I look, let me tell you something. I ain't talking about nobody up in here. I'm just gonna talk about me, and maybe y'all won't feel so uncomfortable. Can I talk about me? Yeah. All right. So when you getting ready to do something wrong, you about to go out. You about to. I mean, you about to show up. I'm talking. In your mind, you already know you are gonna shut the club down. You got your outfit laid out hours before. Hours before. You want the jeans to fit just right. You ain't trying to attract no crazy people, but you do want to attract some attention. Amen? So the jeans need to fit just right. The heels need to be the right heel. Because I want to be on point. I want to look like a dime piece, but I need to be able to dance in them things, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. I can say where I want to go. But y'all not in mind. You think I don't know you? I know you. Amen. So when when you when you when you got that already set up in your mind. And I ain't gonna go too deep into this one because y'all going y'all too holy. I, I already know everybody gonna be able to take it. But even when you're planning other things, you got your playlist, yeah. your song list. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's somebody watching online and y'all for you got every usher song they got. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you tonight gonna be your night. I'm telling you. Now, if I'm, too, if I'm too far with Usher, then let me back up to some of y'all who like Lenny. You already got it. Oh, 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 oh. You already got it on heavy repeat. You got it on, because you're playing it. You already playing it. Well, here's where, that's your, that's your worldly imagination. I'm asking you now, because if you're going to bless the Lord on your soul, and you're going to reap the benefits of what comes from blessing the Lord, you're going to have to use your sanctified imagination. Amen. What does that mean? I need to do a reel. I need to go back in my mind. I remember when I didn't have a $2. Okay. Come on. And I had a couple cans of tuna fish, some eggs. I ain't even have no relish, but I did have mayo. All right. So I just added a little mustard and I put a little sugar on top of the tuna. Because I ain't have no relish. But God came through. I remember when I was living in a white cinder block. Concrete flat apartment. One bedroom. The rent wasn't but $200 a month. I couldn't make the $200. Recent college.
college graduate. I had the $200 rent for my apartment. I had $162 a month for my little Nissan Sentra. I couldn't pay none of them. Because I wasn't making but $12,000 a year. And was getting paid once a month. A thousand dollars a month. By the time FICA and everybody took their piece, my take home was seven hundred and sixty-two dollars a month. And then they asked me at church to tithe. What? Yeah. <laughs> tithe? Yeah. Off of what? I was going to give them the seventy-six dollars. They told me now you got to tithe off the gross. A hundred dollars off of seven sixty-two. But I had to trust God. And I trusted God shaking. I took that dry hundred dollars, you know. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm acting a fool today. I'm sorry. Y'all know that song, these last two dollars. <laughs> I took that dry one hundred dollar bill and put it down. I made sure I put it down in between Malachi three and ten. Because God, God, you said to prove you now here with. To see if you won't open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I won't have room to receive it. I got some room. I got some room. I need you to prove that. I put that hundred dollars down in there and I gave it shaking and trembling at church. Nervous. But I was determined to honor God. So I gave him a tithe. And I probably had maybe a gallon of water and something else in my refrigerator, but it wasn't much in that one, in that two, in that one bedroom concrete flat apartment in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. But let me tell you what God did. Let me tell you what my God did. Yeah. I had a friend of mine. She had no clue because I didn't go around acting like I was starving. Even though my stomach was touching my back, I ain't tell nobody. That's the problem. Many people want to go around. They want to look yeah. all sad faced. They want somebody to feel sorry for them yeah. and all of that. I trusted God. I did what he told me to do. And I figured he'd come through for me, and he did. Yes. Yes. Out of nowhere, one Sunday evening, my friend, she didn't have a clue what was going on. Uh -huh. She showed up at my apartment, and I'm like, she don't never come to my apartment. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? She said, hey, I, I was taking a chance that you were going to be here at the house. I said, yeah, I'm here. What's going on? Now, I ain't got too much furniture in that little one-bedroom apartment, so I really didn't want her to come inside because I was embarrassed. But let me tell you what she did. She said, hold on right here. I'm going to go back to the car. I got a little something for you. Came back with bags of groceries. Y'all heard the plural? Bags of groceries. She came in with the first armful. She said, I don't know what you like. I want to say I'm hungry. I'm going to like whatever you want. <laughs> with bags of groceries. Yes. And she had milk, she had bread, she had peanut butter. You know the staple yeah. stuff where you yeah. can yeah. make your little meal and won't be home, right? Yeah. About four or five bags of groceries. I and know. then just started putting stuff in my refrigerator. Where's your kitchen? <laughs> so she started putting things in the refrigerator and the tears welled up in my eyes. Because then I knew God loved me. Yes. Then I knew yes. his word was true. Yes. Then I knew, Deacon, then I knew that I would be all right tithing. Because yes. he did prove me yes. on that. Yes. He proved me on that. Yes. He said, okay, you asked me to prove you, I'm going to prove it to you. Now, did, what, did everything just flip over and turn around instantly? No, but I never went without it. Yes. And over the years, as I play back in my mind, this is my sanctified imagination now. As I play back in my mind over the years, I can say like David said, I've been young and I now I'm older. I ain't old, I'm older. But I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. Oh my God. That just blessed me. Because yes. God reminds me. Yes. Didn't I take care of you then when you ain't have two nickels to rub together? 
You done got a couple little raises and now you think I can't? You think I can't meet this need? Yeah, that was a $200 rent, but you think I can't do $1,500 in mortgage? You think I can't do that? The cattle on a thousand hills are mine. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. You think I can't? Prove me again. That's why I love the song that says, I've seen him move. He moved the mountains, and I believe I'll see him do it again. That's who he is. So when you're faced with something, you got to be like the psalmist David said. He says, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. In other words, I'm talking to you, mind, will, and emotion. I'm telling you to speak well of God. Yes. Take yourself through a sanctified rewind. Yes. Play that tape back in your mind when your mama was laying on her bed of affliction. Yes. Yes. All right. And they said she had two strokes on the left side of her brain. She had just had triple bypass heart surgery. Yes. And it didn't look good. Yes. And 30 years later, she's still kicking. Amen. Yes. Won't he do it? Yes. You got to take yourself through an exercise sometimes. You always good at playing the negative. Why can't you play the positive? Why can't you play when God, I remember when the car wouldn't crank. And I had just gotten the word on, I can speak to a mountain and command it to be thou removed and cast into the sea and not doubt in my heart. And if I believe what I say, then I shall have whatsoever I say. So I spoke to that car. Yeah. Didn't we, Pastor? We spoke to that vehicle in Chicago, Illinois, and it was cold. Yeah. We spoke to that vehicle and commanded it to crank. I didn't know what was wrong with the car. They just told me I could speak to it. Yeah. So we spoke to it, and it cranked. Come on, Jesus. My Lord, yes. In Jesus' name, it did. Yeah. It might sound foolish to you, but it happened. Just take yourself through an exercise. It ain't, listen, I guarantee you, if you start doing that, and you take yourself through that exercise, I guarantee you, you're going to be there for a minute. Isn't it easy for us to always focus on the negative? Even in a relationship. We'll rehearse over and over again what somebody did to us and what they said to us and how bad the relationship was. Wasn't anything good? Did that happen? We'll rehearse over and over again. And I venture to say that if we would spend more time looking at the good qualities of those that we're in relationship with, if we would spend more time focusing on what they bring to the table, the good qualities, and making a, making a concerted effort to speak well of them, you might get something different. You might get something different out the person. Okay, all right, y'all got quiet on me again. I, I, listen, let me tell you, let me tell y'all something. From my standpoint, I can always tell when I done hit some topics that ain't really too comfortable for people, because y'all get tight like I don't know what. Y'all get, y'all get like this. I'm like, okay, that must have hit something. Yeah, let's go on, let's talk about the Lord. Let's go back to remembering the love of God, amen. So the psalmist said, and we close it right here. So he says this, he says, Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Speak well of the Lord. I'm commanding you, mind, will, and emotion, to think about the goodness of God, to bless the Lord. And the Lord said this to me. We got to train ourselves to do this. The real us, our spirit, should speak to our soul, our mind, will, and emotion, and command our soul and body to fall in line and speak well of, praise, kneel down and show adoration to the Lord. 
That's how we remember his love. And then it tells you why you can speak well of him. Look at this in verse 3. Don't forget his benefits. Verse 3 says this. Here are the, the list of benefits. Here's where it starts. If you need something to remember, if you need, this is Psalm 103, Psalm 103 and 3. If you need something to kick you off a jump start on remembering his benefits and remembering his love, let me give you a list real quick. Number one, verse three says, he forgives all your sin. Yeah. Ain't that good? Amen. The Bible says he blesses your sin as far as the east is from the west. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't holding nothing against you. Yeah. Hallelujah. He ain't holding nothing against you. As a matter of fact, he don't even remember what you did. Yeah. If you asked him for forgiveness, God don't even remember what you did. Yeah. The only people that remember what you did is you, the devil, and the person you did it with. Amen. So stop bringing that up. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. Let it. Somebody say, let it go. Let it go. God tired of hearing about that. He said, I've already addressed that issue. I sent Jesus and he forgave. He shed his blood for your forgiveness. I don't want to hear about that no more. I don't place it as far as the east is from the west. So the first benefit is he forgives all of your sins, your iniquities, your mischief. Amen? Number two, he heals all your diseases. He heals all of your diseases. <clears throat> well, why are you saying it like that, Pastor Abel? I know some of y'all want to say he heals all your diseases and run it together, but anything that diseases you, that's both physical and emotional and mental. Whatever it is that diseases you, he's healed. He sent Jesus and he's healed. Amen. 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 So he heals all your diseases. He has redeemed your life from destruction. I've alluded to this before. Y'all, you got to do is think about how many times have I found myself in a bad situation? I could have had an accident. I was drinking and driving. Or I was in the car with somebody who was drinking and driving. Or hi. I told y'all the story about me on the motorbike, didn't I? Oh, I ain't tell you that? Okay, well, I ain't gonna tell you today either. <laughs> I thought I had. I, when I get up here, I get to telling y'all too much. So I thought I had already, but maybe I shouldn't have. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you today. But crazy, just foolishness. And God spared my life. He spared my life. So he redeems your life from destruction. Number four, the scripture says he crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. When you deserve some consequences, he holds the consequences back. When I should have probably went to jail for breaking the law and he gave me mercy. Amen? And finally, Five and six. The scripture says, and he satisfies you with good. Somebody say, God satisfies me with good. God satisfies me with good. He daily loads me with benefits. He daily loads me with benefits. I walk in good things all the time. I walk in good things all the time. I expect goodness. I expect goodness. And mercy. And mercy. To follow me. To follow me. Every day. Every day. Goodness is chasing me down. Are chasing me down. Good things are chasing me down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord God. You should have praised right there. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. That was a good spot to praise. Yeah. I'm expecting good stuff. See, the reason why we can't shout because we don't expect good. If we was expecting good, we'll stop saying stuff like this. If it ain't one thing, it's another. Lord, I tell you, if it ain't one thing, it's four or five. What kind of language is that? I'm expecting good. He satisfies me with good. And finally, right as we close, and the scripture says, and he renews your strength or your youth 
as the eagles. Isaiah 40, 29 says, those that have no strength, he increases strength. Can I, can I tell you what the Lord told me? Yes. He said this. He says, when you spend time remembering his love and benefits, you won't find yourself slipping into the pits of depression, loneliness, grief, despair, hopelessness, or feeling lost. When you spend time remembering his love and his benefits, you won't find yourself slipping into the pits of depression, loneliness, grief, despair, hopelessness, or feeling lost. Did not Philippians chapter four and eight tell us to think on those things that are pure, those things that are just, those things that are lovely and of a good report. And the verse 9 says, when we think on those things, God will be with us. Amen? Amen. 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 Were you blessed by the word? Yes. Have you been blessed by the word? Yes. Amen. Amen. Remembering his love. I challenge you today, even those of you who are watching, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're up against, if you would take yourself through the exercise of remembering the things that God has done for you, remembering the goodness he has shown you, the love and the mercy, things that you shouldn't have experienced but God allowed you to experience his goodness anyway. Things when you should have received maybe a negative outcome, but God's mercy stepped in and forbid or forbade it. When we remember his love, I'm telling you, when we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made, we're coming into the season now when we begin to remember Jesus' life his death and his resurrection. And when we remember the great price he paid, that ought to make us say, you know what? Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. It might not feel good right now in the moment, but it's going to be all right because he loves me. It's going to be all right because he. we've been here before. And he came through before. So he's going to do it again. Amen. 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 Will you bow your heads and let me pray for you? Those of you who are watching, whatever you're in need of, I want to join my faith with yours that God will meet you at your point of need. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's probably your most pressing need. Life is difficult sometimes and can be difficult, but it's even more difficult without, without Jesus. I can tell you, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have Christ in my life to lead me, to guide me, to comfort me, to strengthen me, to give me a gentle nudge and tell me it's going to be all right. Baby, you're going to make it through this. And so at this time, I want to offer Christ to you. I want to offer you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. It's very simple. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's very simple. All you have to do is, the scripture says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as your Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised them from the dead. The scripture says that you shall be saved. So I want to invite you to open up your heart and ask Jesus to come in. Amen. And then after we pray this prayer of salvation, I just want to pray over you and join my faith with you. That God will meet whatever need you have. Amen. So those of you in the sanctuary, those of you online, if you want to meet Jesus, I ask that you repeat after me. Those in the sanctuary, would you pray with me? 
for those who want to receive Jesus as Lord. Amen. Amen. Repeat after me. Father, Father I, come to you today, I come to you today just as I am, as I am a, sinner, a sinner in need of a Savior. Need of a savior. That, savior that Savior is Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus come, into my heart. come into my heart. Save me. Save me. Deliver me. Be the Lord of my life. I renounce Satan and all his ways. And this day, I now take Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Father, I know you sent Jesus to die on their cross for me. And for that, I say thank you. But you took it a step farther, and you raised him from the dead. And you, from the dead. And you, said, and you said, if I confess him as Lord, him as Lord and, believe and believe you raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. I shall be saved. So, right now, so right now, I declare with my mouth, I with my mouth that, I that I am, am saved. saved. I In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you give God praise for those who prayed that prayer in faith? If you prayed that prayer today, it doesn't matter if you had a feeling. It's not based on your feeling. It's not based on an outward show. It's based on your faith. If you pray that prayer in faith, then you are born again. You are saved. And we say welcome to the family of God. Those of you in the room, if you prayed that prayer, we say welcome to the family of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you. And God is excited to have you as his sons and his daughters. Amen. Amen. Now. If you prayed that prayer, would you please, those of you online, would you please send us a message either by messenger on Facebook or send us a text at 601-618-8909. And we would love to send you either the electronic version, if you send us your email address, or if you send us your physical address, we'll send you the hard copy free of charge of this book called The New Birth. It lets you know what you just experienced. It tells you what to do now that you're born again because you need to get connected to a good church home that's going to teach you the word and be connected with believers that are going to pray for you and encourage you and disciple you and strengthen you. Amen? Amen. So send us a text to 601-618-8909 and we just pray God's riches and best be yours. Amen? Amen? For those who are in the building, all you need to do is come see us and we'll be glad to give you this book free of charge. Now I'm going to do what I promised. I want to pray for you. Those of the rest of you online and those of you in the room want to pray for you. Whatever your need is. Can you bow your heads? Father, we thank you for the word today. Thank you that the word spoke to us. The word spoke to us, oh God. And we make a decision of quality today that no matter what we're facing, we will bless your name. We will bless the Lord, O oh, our soul. Help us to remember your benefits. Help us to remember your love and your goodness. Now, Father God, I declare and decree a supernatural turnaround on behalf of these, your precious people. Whatever they're facing, I send forth angels now, angels of God. Go forth and minister on their behalf and prosper their way. I declare a supernatural turnaround in their homes, turnaround in their relationships, turnaround in their situations and circumstances, in their finances, on their jobs. Supernatural turnaround in their physical bodies, healing in their bodies in Jesus' name. Father, we believe you for it. We believe we receive it as we pray. And we thank you that it is so. In Jesus' name, everybody that, that agrees said what? Amen. 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 Well, then, can you praise God like it's so? We 
Can you clap it up for those online? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah.